Hi, I'm James Taylor, business creativity and innovation keynote speaker, and this is The Creative Life, a show dedicated to you, the creative. If you're looking for motivation, inspiration, and advice while at home, at work, or on your daily commute, then this show is for you. Each episode brings you a successful creative, whether that's an author, musician, entrepreneur, performer, designer, or thought leader. They'll share with you their journey, their successes, their failures, their creative process, and much, much more. You'll find show notes for this episode, as well as free training on creativity, over at jamestaylor.me. Enjoy this episode. Hi, it's James Taylor here. Today's episode was first aired as part of International Authors Summit. This inspiring virtual summit reveals the secrets of making, marketing, and monetizing a best-selling book. If you would like to access the full video version as well as in-depth sessions with over 40 best-selling authors, then I've got a very special offer for you. Just go to internationalauthorssummit.com where you'll be able to register for a free pass for the summit. Yeah, that's right. Over 40 New York Times and Amazon best-selling authors, book editors, agents, and publishers sharing their insights, strategies, and tactics on how to write and market your first or next bestseller. So just go to internationalauthorssummit.com, but not before you listen to today's episode. Hey there, it's James Hale, and I'm delighted to have with us today Lloyd Luna. Lloyd Luna is a productivity humorist and one of Asia's most popular motivational speakers, as well as being the author of 10 books covering business and personal development. He is also a serial entrepreneur in the Philippines, having started and built businesses, including a speaker bureau and a book publisher. And it's my great pleasure to have Lloyd with us today. So welcome, Lloyd. Thank you so much. The James Taylor the James. of the world. <laughs> so we've, 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 we've hung out um, before we were in Singapore and I'm, I'm going to be over with you soon in the Philippines as well. Um, but for people that don't know a little bit more about you, uh, I, I would love to know, first of all, what are you working on just now? What has your focus at the moment? And when it comes to your writing, how did you get to publishing all these books in the first place? Um, interestingly, um, I, somehow I outgrew myself. Uh, I am now focusing on a very specific uh, topic I call step back leadership. Uh, since I started 13 years ago, um, I have been speaking a lot of, about motivation and general inspiration. So what I was like, uh, I was accepting uh, 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 invitations uh, from everywhere to, to and speaking to to anyone on the topics of uh, career development, uh, being a, a great student, uh, being a great manager, being a great entrepreneur. So it's like uh, the books that I've written since 2004 talked about many things about motivation. They are generic. They are uh, non-specific. Um, but at the moment, I'm, I'm focusing solely on. Uh, doing a leadership expedition um, to the Ifugao Rice Terraces in the Philippines, uh, the eighth wonder of the ancient world, based on my latest book, uh, Step Back Leadership. So you've, got, you've gone on this journey from being a kind of g- general motivational speaker, author, to being one who is starting to focus very much on, the, on leadership. I think I saw the other, the other day you were, uh, I think it was a Leaders Lead, you, you know, you've got, you, you have a, you, you're really starting to kind of niche down and kind of finding your lane that, that you want to go with. Um, I'm interested, you know, in choosing that and trying to focus on that. Was was that because you're looking to m- move more internationally uh, in your in your audiences and your and your speaking? Was was that one of the reasons for doing that, or that is that just a topic you find that has strongly kind of aligns with you? Well, um, first and foremost, I think uh, contrary to some popular belief, um, in the Philippines we have a unique leadership concept uh, two thousand years ago. Uh, and it's about the people being the leader. And it was never documented until I came up to the mountains and interviewed the tribe who survived uh, in 2,000 years. And I thought that for the longest time, uh, a lot of leadership concepts from the West, they were trying to transfer to the East. And they, they made the Philippines starting, they, they started the Spaniards conquered the Philippines 300 years, for 300 years. Japanese for a couple of years, Americans for a couple of years. So all of this leadership uh, from the West and, 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 and one from, from Japan, they, they took away the uh, so, sort of uh, the leadership, unique, uh, the unique leadership style, the original style, original style of, of Filipino leadership. So, so I thought, when I, when I went back to the, to, to the mountains, the rice terraces, I discovered the, 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 
the the unique regional leadership style that we have uh, that we have been um, uh, that we must be must be having. So it it was sort of a uh, a junction between realizing that I had to narrow down my my uh, my content because I don't want to be popular. I want to be known. I want to go uh, to be the, the go-to guy in, in in terms of a specific topic, whether I'm writing a book or I'm, I'm speaking. So it, did, it it resonated. Now it's I'm advocating for the Eastern Asian leadership style, which is primarily built on trust, collaboration, and humanity. Uh, Facebook nowadays has been talking about, you know, we are a collaborative company. Hey, 2,000 years ago, we are doing that. Mm. We were doing that. So um, I, I, I thought that when, when uh, um, uh, choosing the, the, the things that I write now, I, I am really focusing sharply uh, about step back leadership. It's, uh, leadership is still generic when you write about leadership. Uh, but, but, but I guess uh, one of the things that an aspiring author uh, should consider really is to make sure that he has a sort of an original content, research, whatever that, that may be, that he can really, or he or she can really call his or her own. It, it's, it's, not a, it's not a derivative from, from someone else's. It's, a, it's a very unique to him or her. And then from there, he can expand the business. And sometimes it is, as you say, I mean, you've, you've found something very kind of local to you, which you think that the world can, can learn from. Um, funny enough, I was, I was just somewhere uh, a few weeks ago, locally to me, and it was something I found like an old historical thing. I thought, actually, I, I want to be able to use that because it's a really good, it links into my, my bigger themes I speak on. Um, so you kind of use that, you use those kind of unique stories, which probably only you or a very small number of people would go go to look for. But it, it, some of the other guests we've had, they've said, some of the guests we've had, they've said, I'm a an author who speaks. And other guests we've had said, I'm a speaker who writes. I'm a writer who speaks or I'm a speaker who writes. Do you have a sense of which which one of those you are or are you something in between? I am some something in between. Um I started as an author and ended up as a speaker. And as a speaker, I am now uh, ending up as an author. So okay, coming in circle. Sort of a, sort of a circle, uh, trying to go the, the cycle. So, yeah, I, I'm in between, basically in between. Uh, you're in that middle part. And when you first started going on your journey to becoming a, uh, an author... Who were those role models for you? Were there were the people that you had around you that you could ask advice from in terms of how to write and to publish, or did you have to kind of look from afar at, at maybe authors that you admired and kind of learn from them? Well, the first book, the first book I have ever read uh, is uh, *The Alchemist* by Paulo Coelho. So Paulo Coelho has been very instrumental in um, in in my journey. I started as a Paulo Coelho guy, and then. The second book that I was able to read, minus the politics, is Donald Trump's book, How to Get Rich, with the co-author, uh, of course. Mm-hmm. So uh, um, th- those, those two personalities really inspired me to, to, to write. So at first, they were uh, influential in my, my, my writing journey. So, but but um, yeah, as far as I can remember, after that, I just navigated things on my own, right? From, from writing to publishing. Because uh, for, for, those of, uh, for, for, for those audience who, who don't know the story, I, in 2004, I, I wrote a manuscript that all publishing houses in the entire Philippines turned down. So um, it's very painful, but didn't really bother me at all because I thought one day it will come out. And the only, the only way that I could do that is when I put up my own publishing business, which I didn't know uh, the business. I had just had to register the business without the business plan, without planning, etc. It was me, myself, and I. So it was a corporation about uh, about myself, um, just to make sure that I'm able to publish the book. And from there, I never look back. So I thought um, uh, for, for those who are aspiring to to, to be to be an author, um, number one that they need to do is eliminate all possible excuses that can they can ever think, because excuses does not make a book. So when you say that eliminate the excuses, um, and we're going to talk about this in a minute, I know you do workshops in terms of book book writing, book making. When those students come to you, those people come to you, and they 
they have any idea. I, I, maybe I, I, write, I want to write a book or sp- uh, maybe writing is something I want to have in my life. What are the, what are the main excuses that they can, they'll say to you? They say that they don't have the time. Time. Who, will, who else will give you time? <laughs> yeah. Who else? Where can you buy additional time? <laughs> the thing is, uh, they don't have time. They don't have the expertise. They are conscious about their grammar. Uh, they are afraid of not being accepted. They are afraid of being criticized for their writing. They are afraid of um, uh, not being able to sell afterwards. They, they, they are just, they just are afraid. They are just afraid of so many things. And these are these are excuses that really keep them from from producing writing a book. And number two, I guess, very important, is that they have to identify whether they are the content provider or the writer. Because it, in this time of history, I thought that you don't have to write to be an author. If you are a content provider, you can easily just get a recorder and record yourself based on the structure of the contents you want to discuss, have somebody transcribe it, have somebody edit it, have somebody design the graphics, and had to have somebody to print the book mm. and then publish it. Well done. The end of the story. So I thought you have to decide first whether you're a content provider because not all speakers um, can easily uh, become an author overnight. Uh, one of the things that, that make it difficult for them to publish a book or write a book or produce a book is that they try to be someone else. If you are not a writer, just get a recorder, record yourself and then do the process and that's what we do during the book making workshop really make sure that you identify what you can and what you cannot do and make sure that you are able to collaborate with other players because an editor is making a living out of editing job so let's not kill the editors by giving them the job let's not edit our own if we cannot uh, let the graphics editor do the cover don't don't design things like this so you're really acting as the as this, the, the the intellectual property creator in the center then, and then you're just finding those other roles just to kind of support you. I mean, it's, it's funny when we think, if we go way, way back, you know, 1500, 2000 years, then a lot of these famous books that we think today of whether it's, you know, the Bible or whether it's the Dhammapada or whatever the, the book is, they weren't actually written by those authors. They were scribes there that would write out the book. They would someone, they would have the, the content creator, as you say, would be speaking it. And then there would be writers, the scribes that would either be writing it or memorizing it and then writing it down at a later date. So we're kind of coming back. We're kind of coming back circle again. It is interesting because uh, I think Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ was the provider of the content and the apostles just wrote them for, for him. So you just <laughs> yeah, the collaboration thing. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. Uh, uh, the richest author of all, probably Jesus Christ. Yeah. But... But it's also interesting to note that um, uh, we, we have to somehow be able to adjust uh, uh, by the call of the times. You know, this is the, the time in history when we don't have so much luxury of time that we can uh, sit and concentrate about writing. Again, uh, identifying whether you are a content provider and or um, a writer uh, is very crucial before producing and publishing a book. Now, in your events, I, I've checked them. That the workshops that you run, they, they look really fun because they are they're, they're quite short. I think like two or three day events. They're in beautiful locations uh, in the Philippines as well. And you get everyone together, and, and the the thing that you you work with the writers on or the content um, creators on is how to get what's in their head potentially in their head and their expertise out onto a page and into into a, into a book or into a form. So can you talk through just you know from the top, the top level you know that what that process looks like for someone that hasn't experienced you know maybe a dip, maybe they they they've traditionally kind of come at it from the perspective of just sitting down there and writing every day and doing it that way. But can you talk about the process that you work with writers on? Well, number one, um, I I tell them my first I, I tell them my story uh, that the first thing I did was to eliminate all possible excuses that I had. So I, I tell them the story how I started. And number two, I realized the power of peer pressure. When you come together as a group and push yourselves to the limits so that two months later, all of you will have to launch a book. So the process starts from me telling the story and assisting them on how they can structure their chapters. And then once they do that, the team will kind of sort of uh, 
evaluate each one's title and subtitle and uh, possible uh, structure of the contents. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it, be, it, it, be, it becomes a, a, a community, a very small community per batch of uh, as, uh, aspiring authors that they, they, they give inputs um, uh, to, to each one. And then after that, they, they, uh, they come, come together and then make sure that they have the schedule with me uh, to work finally on the content. And this happens af after the, the, the bookmaking workshop. I sit with them over coffee uh, and have a two-hour interview about their content based on the structure that we created during the workshop. And then after that, transcription, editing, uh, layout, uh, design, publishing, and then printing. So in less than 60 days, the book is out. And they have this group launch. This is very important. They have a group launch. So it's uh, something that they don't have to and the benefit of also having working in that group way, first of all, then you've essentially got a, a small focus group of other people giving you feedback on your ideas as, as you're creating it. So you're getting almost like you're, you're, you're kind of market testing it, I, I guess, uh, before the book right. is out. Exactly. Market and testing and mastermind, if you mean. Masterminding, exactly. And then, so, and then also when you go and launch, you've got a group of other people. It's not just you that's trying to promote to your own list or your own audience, but you've got a group of other people maybe connected in the same world, maybe not, but they're all promoting and all talking about your book uh, together. Yes, perfectly. That's exactly what, what, uh, what is happening here in the Philippines and that's exactly what I intend to do in the next couple of years, yeah. maybe in my lifetime. That's fantastic. And so, how, so as, how many people do you tend to have on these workshops that you do at the moment? Well, it should be from uh, eight to 10 people. Um, more than that, I think it will be uh, really ineffective. Um, um, I, I want to focus one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Plus, of course, there, there should be some schedule pro problems eventually. When you when you try to launch it in sixty days and you have more than ten. Now you mentioned also being that content provider in the middle there and having these other roles. You mentioned the role of the editor. You mentioned the role of the of the designer. Uh, what other roles does someone need to have around them if they're going to use that type of model? Well, basically that's about it. I mean, you provide the content, somebody transcribed it uh, verbatim, and then someone edits it and goes back to you and say, "Oh, I need to add some more uh, idea," and then go back to the editor. And then finally, the editor will give the copy back to you and say, OK, let's go. And then the publisher will say, OK, let's go that, get the ISBN. And then go to the printer and say, print the book, uh, 100 copies, 500, 1,000 copies. And basically, that's it. Um, so well, in, in between, you're trying to design the, the book uh, cover, front, back, and then the, the layout of the, the content. Um, so nothing much, uh, nothing much to do. I, I, I always emphasize, the, and this is very important, I always emphasize to focus on your role in bookmaking. What is your role, really? Um, uh, because if you are unable to identify the role, uh, it will get messy along the way. You are not the editor. You are not the graphics designer. Leave, leave these things to them. And then what about that, that, that transcribing role? So you're, I imagine you, you're speaking out your ideas, you're getting your outline, your chapter headings, and you're, you're kind of talking your ideas. Um, are you using something like a, a rev.com, you know, a transcribe transcription service like that? Or are you just trying to find someone who can specialize in transcribing these types of books that can also do a little bit of finessing when they're transcribing your, your words? Yeah, uh, the, the, the general idea of transcription is verbatim trans transcription. So the transcriber or transcriptionist cannot, cannot do something about it except that to transcribe it word by word. And secondly, if it is a direct um, uh, English two hours, and then we send to like uh, Rev, is it Rev? Yeah. Uh, software, uh, survey, sorry, service uh, provider that does that. So yes, basically by all means, uh, I, I am not yet uh, using that one, but in the future it is full English. And then I, I will go for $1. Was it $1 per word? Yeah, well, yeah, there's, there's, there's like the... There's a couple of that. I think it's one dollar per minute, but actually, there's there's a there's a number of other services. I can't remember all the names of them now that are even cheaper than that. But you just you have to deal with the fact that some of them the the quality the accuracy is not as high. Uh, I've I've used Rev.com and and I like them and I like the, the the accuracy. But some of the ones you can you can do and they're maybe ninety seven percent accurate instead of ninety nine percent accurate. Yeah, so you have to decide. Or maybe it's your fault that now it's appearing to my to my wall. <laughs> James Taylor used the service of Rev. <laughs> yeah. 
So as you've been progressing on this journey as an author, was there any big light bulb moment or insight, a time when you went, ah, oh, okay, this is the direction I want to go with my writing, or this is the, this is what I want, this is the kind of audience I want to serve with my writing? Oh, well, it, it, first it was Andrew Bryant, from, past president of the Asia Professional Speaker Singapore, uh, that asked me, what is your topic? What is it that you talk about? Uh, what, what is the subject that you speak on? <laughs> and I said, a lot. And he said, not a good idea. So when I asked him, what do you talk about? He said, self-leadership. And I thought, wow, how sharp was that? How narrow was that? That the conversation was just contained into self-leadership. It's, it's, it's about directly promoting the, 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 his topic, original topic, so to speak. So I didn't really realize that until um, uh, I attended the Global Speaker Summit in Auckland, New Zealand in February. And the same thing uh, uh, the same thing was uh, given to me. Like you have to narrow down. You have to be an expert in a specific field. It's, it, it should be a, a two inch, uh, two inch wide and mm -hmm. one two miles deep. So it's, I said probably yeah. It, it's very difficult for us to leave our comfort zone. Um, when you are in that level that you have been, I have written what, 14, 14 books. And uh, I'm comfortable with my, my subject. It's very easy. I did not do a, couple, a lot of research uh, writing the 10, 11, 12 books, 13 books. But on my 14th book, I had to travel 357 kilometers from, the, from Manila and uh, immer immerse myself in the Ifugao culture, local tribe just to make sure that I get it right. Research, I, I, I lived in the mountains for a couple of, of, of days um, and, and really asked the tribe leaders and the elders um, and the people in the community how, how, how they built the, the rice terraces in 2000 years ago. And now I, I felt it became an archeological research. And I didn't even realize that I am now an archaeologist, cultural uh, archaeologist. So it, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting journey. I, it, it's not, it was not really in, an intention uh, the, at, at at that point, but the light bulb again started when uh, that Andrew Bryan guy uh, came to the Philippines, asked me, and then it was reaffir reaffirmed in in Auckland when when uh, the same topic uh, was was presented. So this book is coming out is going to be coming out all about this this discovery that you've made there and how it applies, how other business leaders and business owners can apply this, and executives can apply this to their own businesses. Um, I, I, are you already kind of going out on the road now with the the keynote to go alongside the book, or is that something that you're working up working up now as well? Well, basically, um, I, I have a, a couple of well, I have two, imp I have three uh, uh, business models that uh, that are derivative from the book. Uh, so, if you are an author, and I suggest you become an author uh, if you're if you're watching uh, or listening, it's because writing a book does not only make an authority, it gives you the opportunity to expand your business um, by using different business models. For example, my Step Back Leadership book, the initial uh, idea is to do a keynote speech uh, about the book. And if you aren't able to finish that, they buy the books. <laughs> so you have uh, two income streams, the books and the keynote. But also, and more importantly, I now created my own global leadership expedition going to the mountains, bringing at least 10 to 12 CXOs, CEOs, CIOs, CFOs, whatever CXOs that they have, bring them to the mountain for an exclusive four-day expedition and retreat. Um, and then hopefully, uh, once they, they, they enjoyed it and they learn from it, hopefully, they invite me to their organization and cascade the entire program to their organization. And number three, maybe if they like really the 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 uh, the, the idea, then I can upsell it to being coach uh, as a step back leadership coach to to the organization to the CEO, whoever uh, can can benefit from the from the from the idea. So writing a book is something that you don't just see as 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 a, you have a book and you are an authority because you can do a lot. Uh, a lot of businesses out of that particular content, especially if it is original and if it is well researched and it is uh, it is interesting, it is unique. And I think I, I think that would be interesting as well to track over time with like a CRM 
for example, where you can see someone coming in, they attend that conference, then you see them buying that book, and then you see them coming on the expedition, and then you see them going for the coaching, and and that book, which would maybe cost you know a few dollars to print and and to give, actually is now resulting in thousands of dollars of of sales. Um, so you can actually see the, the the return on that as well. Exactly. I mean, I I don't I don't see my. Because I, I'm not commercially published author. I, I don't have a, an international uh, publisher that, that, that carries any of my titles. So easily I have all the control on how, how many uh, copies I'm going to print, uh, when I will print out. So it, it's kind of, I can easily give away a, a copy of the book and then it, it, uh, it, it, uh, it's a seed that, 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 uh, the seed that I plant and then reap a lot of rewards yeah. from, from that simple giving away of a copy. Tell us about some of the tools that you use and what apps and tools you use as, as a writer that help you do the, the work that you do. Well, basically, I just, I, I just use pages on, on, on Mac. Um, uh, and oops, I also have, uh, this is a Zoom H, H1, H1N uh, recorder. Very useful, very handy. Uh, USB, you can record for, for 40 hours. Wow. Oh. So, Zoom H1N, handy recorder. Uh, pretty much about that. I mean, uh, a, a, piece of, a piece of paper, a notebook, and uh, a pen. And what, and what about in terms of um, if you would recommend a book to someone on, on the craft of writing, on how to, to write, or on the business of writing and maybe self-publishing? What would that book be? Um, I don't have the title yet. I'm writing it. <laughs> You're writing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you an update. <laughs> okay, so what? what, what... No, I, I, I don't. I the thing is the things that I know right now. I I did not. I did not even. Uh, I did not even get or buy a book. Uh, from from bookstores about self publishing or, uh, or writing. It's a. I don't know. It's just natural tendency for me to want to write and then, I navigated my own path. So I cannot really recommend which book to get. And that's why right now, as we speak, I'm really thinking, seriously considering writing about those two topics, uh, how to write and how to do business as an author. There could, there could, there could be a book and it comes to by the time you watch this, check, go and check out um, Lloyd's website. Who knows? There might be a book in the offing uh, as well. Um, and I, I've, So I've got a final uh, question for you, Lloyd. I want you to imagine that you woke up tomorrow morning uh, and you have to start from scratch as a writer. So no one knows you haven't got any books published. You have to start again. What would you do? How would you restart your writing career? I am going to go back to my roots. I am going to go back and review my story. And I'm going to start with my story. Because I think nowadays people are really interested uh, about real story, uh, inspirational at that. And I cannot, I cannot start immediately um, if I were to do uh, research here and there. Uh, the, the 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 closest thing I have in me is my story, and since I have the story to tell, I think it's the it's the first thing that I would want to write if I were to restart my writing uh, journey. So we mentioned a couple of times here about your your bookmaking workshop. If people want to learn more about that and also more about you as well, where's the best place for them to go and do that? Well, nowhere else but bookmaking workshop. Dot com. You've got the dot .com, bookmakingworkshop.com. And we'll put a link here below uh, so people can check that out. And if, if people want to just kind of connect with you, uh, personally learn about some of your other books and things, where should they go to, to learn about that? Uh, all social media networks at Lloyd Luna. At Lloyd Luna. Fantastic. We'll put all those links here as well. Lloyd, thank you so much for coming on today. It's always a pleasure speaking to you. I wish you all the best with the, the bookmaking workshops you're doing. I've been seeing some of them online. They look like they're in beautiful locations. I'm very I'm very envious. I'll have to come out to, to one of them at some point soon as well. Uh, but thanks so much and all the best with the next book. Come on here, James Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Come on. Take care. All the best. Thank you so much. I, I'm, I'm honored, uh, really privileged to be, uh, to, to be here and to, to, to be able to share, just to contribute uh, whatever inspiration and uh, tactics and strategies they can use so that they can finally become a published author. Uh, really an, an honor for me to be here. Thank you so much for the time as well. 
If you're interested in living a more creative life, then I'd love to invite you to join me as I share some of the most successful strategies and techniques that high performing creatives use. I put them all together in a free downloadable ebook that you can get by going to jamestaylor.me. That's jamestaylor.me to get your free downloadable ebook on creativity.